first weekend in March of 2018, I was on the grounds of the Army War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania at the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center for the 2018 edition of the Honorable Company of Horners annual meeting and show. Besides enjoying the show, while I was there, I interviewed my friend Tim Grizz Sanner, uh, who is a horn maker for an upcoming edition of Muzzleloader Magazine, should appear in the 2020 edition. I'll be doing a full profile on him. So this was our preliminary interview. And uh, this was a great time to interview Tim because it was at this annual meeting of the Honorable Company of Horners that Tim was raised from journeyman Horner to master Horner status. And he truly deserves it. Tim is a, just a phenomenal guy. And as you might gather from the picture, uh, he's six foot eight inches tall and he makes me look like mini me. But while I was there, I also picked up a horn that Tim had made for me. And this is a French and Indian War style map horn. And basically it shows the forts along Forbes Road in Pennsylvania and some surrounding forts around the area of the road. Uh, very typical design of the period and just beautiful and quite typical of Tim's work. So for me, talking with Tim and picking up the horn, and I have two of his horns, was the highlight of the show. Well, I'm here at the uh, Army Heritage and Education Center at the Army War College uh, at Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And this is the annual meeting of the Honorable Guild of Horners. And they're having also a, uh, a show for the public here. And these are the guys, guys and gals, who are the Powder Horn Makers Guild. So I'll take you a little, uh, little tour around and you can see all the different things all the different things made of horn. Of course, in a lot of ways, horn was the plastic of its age, and uh, you can find a lot of interesting items made with horn in the period, not just powder horns. Not that there weren't plenty of powder horns at the show. Uh, there were, from all of the top makers in this area, certainly, and from beyond. So there was something for everybody who wanted a powder horn. But there were lots of small items made of horn, too. And in some ways, those are, are pretty fascinating. Uh, a lot of the everyday utensils and objects of the 18th century were made out of horn. And, of course, you could also get your raw material there for any project that you'd like to take on yourself, whether it's making a powder horn or making a spoon. Well, Carl Dunkel of Grinning Fox Studios has some beautiful stuff. Look at these little, little powder flasks. Wooden horn. Really, those are gorgeous. The scrimshaw work there. I'm um, here at the uh, table of the talented and charming Chris Polizzi. And she specializes in weaving these straps. A display of books of the craft. Okay, I'm here with Jay Hopkins, who's the author of Banded Tip, Bone Tipped and Banded uh, Horns, which I should know the title of that because you might remember my video reviewing it. But uh, Jay's brought along a, a really interesting collection of original horns, and why don't you tell us about them? All right, well, the, the book is the culmination of a 50-year study of trying to sort out 
regional characteristics of what I call professionally made horns. Those are horns that are made by turners, people that have skills with a lathe. And uh, volume one, Pray, you know, sets the stage, uh, talks a little bit about the early documented horns that that shows that this goes back to the 1740s and probably was continuous uh, from that time up to the 1850s or, or thereafter. Um, volume 1 deals primarily with uh, <coughs> Virginia, and so each year at this meeting I try and bring a, a handful, uh, sometimes as many as 20 horns from the book so that people can handle uh, the horns. And the one th problem that a picture, uh, with a picture is that a small horn will look very similar to a very large horn. Mm -hmm. So getting the impact of having the horn in your hand is a very useful uh, thing. So that's the rationale for bringing these examples. Well, besides the horns themselves, there were all sorts of muzzleloading items to go along with them, like these excellent horn straps made out of leather, uh, shot in ball bags, various loading blocks, powder measures, and uh, all sorts of accoutrements. Even some bear oil, if you can believe that. To lubricate your packages, uh, patches, or keep your gun lubed. So that's a brief look at the show, and maybe if you're in the Pennsylvania, Carlisle, Pennsylvania area, next March, uh, you'll come on down. It's a great little show, and it's open to the public at absolutely no charge. So how can you go wrong? So if you like horns and you like muzzle loading, this is a good break in the middle of the winter. <laughs>